Good morning, Cypress Village residents. Welcome to Virtual Coffee Chat. I'm Ty Morgan, Executive Director, and today is Friday, May 13th. Happy Friday to all our residents and guests that may be with us out there in Cypress Village. Hope everybody's off to a good day and looking forward to a nice weekend. We have had amazing weather this entire week. Hopefully we can keep that going on through the weekend. So with that, we have a infor information packed uh, Friday for you. So thank you for tuning in and I will see you close to the end with some updates of my own. Enjoy today's episode. Bye-bye. Hi, good morning, Cypress Village. And here we are on Friday the 13th. I hope everybody's gonna have a fabulous day. And I hope everybody's been out enjoying this nice tease of cool weather. It's been beautiful. Um, I just have a few things to update you on. The first being the COVID Booster Clinic. That is coming up on Monday, May 23rd. I know originally we said it's going to be in Egret Hall, but we've had to shift the location to the OMR. And we are putting reminder cards in your uh, in-house mailbox and in your mailbox, the tubes out in the homes to remind you of your date and time that you are signed up for. And if you haven't come and uh, picked up your forms that need to be filled out for the booster, please stop by the Innovative Home Office and grab your forms to fill out. If you just go ahead and get it pre-filled out, everything will move, uh, run smoothly on that Monday. I know that there's been a lot of talk about the remote patient health monitoring with Dr. Periani and Dr. Ahmed. It was a very interesting talk and they're actually providing all of the devices for you to use, the blood pressure cuffs and their Bluetooth. And all you have to do is download an app and they track your blood pressure and they will call and check on you on a weekly basis as well. Well, if you missed it this past Wednesday, Dr. Periani and his team they're going to have a table set up during the booster clinic. So you can stop by and speak with them on that Monday, May 23rd in the OMR. And they will have devices. And if you wanna uh, sign up for the trial, you're more than welcome to. So you've got another chance, so don't miss out on it. Also remember, hurricane um, prep is coming up. Uh, June 1st is the first day of hurricane. I know we don't wanna hear it, but it is here upon us. So if you um, think about it, you might want to go ahead and start stocking up on a few things. But I will also be holding some talks and giving you tips on things to do the first week of June. So just kind of keep your eyes and ears open for that. Also, uh, Guardian Pharmacy. This Wednesday will be Tower B pickup. And remember, Guardian Pharmacy is there for you to use every Wednesday in the Wellness Center from 9 a.m. to 1. And remember, if you're utilizing the lockers to pick up your medications, please leave that key behind after you pick up your medications. And also, if I can just remind all of our people who are using scooters to get around on, please keep it at a walking pace inside the towers. Uh, some people get a little anxious to get where they're going. And I know everybody doesn't want to miss out on things that are going on around here around the village, but you need to keep it at a walking pace uh, so we don't have any near accidents or collisions. And also, I know that there's been a little bit of an uptick in uh, COVID cases here in Duval County. And if you feel like that you're having any symptoms and you want to come down to the lab to be tested, or if you wanna come down on Wednesdays and pick up a rapid test from Guardian, please have a mask on. So I think that's all I have for you. I hope everybody has a lovely weekend and see you around the village. All right, good morning, villagers. I hope you're having a great week. Uh, first things first, uh, it turns out I won't be able to be at the planning meeting tomorrow, but I've been working with the activity committee to be sure that I get all of your ideas and comments and suggestions. Um, and I've given them some things to run by you, some ideas that I've had that I'd like to get your input on for, for upcoming months. Um, and so we'll meet again next month all together and start planning for fall and holidays because I'll be here before we know it. Um, some of you have asked about 
symphony tickets. I know the new season tickets are out and some of you want to buy. We will be running the buses to the same three events, um, the coffee series, the masterworks, and the pops. So go ahead and buy your tickets. Everyone will get a seat. In July, we'll send out the survey so that you can fill in all the information that we need to make sure everybody gets on the bus. Also, some of you have asked me about um, the upcoming Van Gogh experience. And yes, I do have a block of tickets for September 22nd. So we'll go ahead and put that in the rotation for the September calendar. If it's a very popular event, we may have to do some kind of a lottery. So that's what's coming up. I hope you have a great weekend. I'll see you around campus. Good morning, Cypress Village. How are we doing today? With you is Dr. MJ, your community therapist. As we all know, May is Mental Health Awareness. And with this, I would like to pose you a question. Are you feeling a little bit fatigued? Maybe tired? A little bit irritable, angry? I mean, with so many things going on, I can understand. Whether your answer is yes or no to my question, it's okay. I still want to remind you that I am located in the Innovative Home Services offices where I provide individual mental health therapy. I also provide free of charge group therapy. Please don't hesitate to call me at 904-807-6290. And with this, I hope you have a beautiful blessed Friday. I cannot wait to meet you all. Hello, this is Laurel Mundell, Director of Administrative Services. I hope you're all having a great start to your day. So for starters, I just wanted to make all the residents aware of a class that I'm hosting and it'll be on May 18th at noon and it, we'll have it in the train lobby. Anyone is invited to come, no sign up is required and we're basically going to talk about how to use the following apps. Lyft, which is a driving service, how you can hire a driver for a ride. Instacart, where you can order your own groceries. And then DoorDash, where you can have a meal, a beverage, ice cream delivered to you here uh, at your home. So uh, we're also at the very tail end of that class going to learn how to do a Google review. So um, I hope you all come out for that. If there's time at the end, we'll also take questions that have to do with the Cypress Village app, if any of you have questions about that as well. But um, I encourage you all to come out May 18th at noon in the train lobby. Uh, then just a reminder about our CCI check-in system. This is uh, something that we offer for all residents. And some of you may have, you know, when you initially moved onto campus, felt that it was more of a burden than a blessing. Um, you didn't want to get that phone call every morning from security or you know take the time to get up and press the button before 10 a.m. But um, some, some people have recently realized that it, it would be beneficial to them. Either um, they, their spouse is no longer with them or their circumstances have changed and it would be better to have security aware of them checking the movement or the check-in in the morning. So if this is something you would like to opt back into or if you have any questions about it, please give security a call. 904-807-6244. Then as a last thing that I'm going to talk about today is we're going to change the Wi-Fi passwords for the Cypress Village guest and Cypress Village resident networks. It's about time to do that. I think it's been a couple years since we've changed it. And um, Cybersecurity 101 says that you should change your passwords on a fairly regular basis. So we're going to go ahead and do that. To see the new password, please check out the administrative newsletter that's going to be going out this weekend. You'll see both passwords there. And then just be advised that starting Monday, everything that you were normally hooked up to is going to uh, disconnect. So you'll need that updated password. If you have any questions, you know who to call or email, and I hope you have a great day. It's Ben here working with the culinary team again. Uh, as you can see over here, I'm working with some fresh herbs, fresh parsley, rosemary. We've got some nice chives, some fresh th thyme that just got pulled out of the garden. One of the things that I've been recognizing working with the culinary team and also with the uh, menu chat and the dining committee is there's some concerns about the sodium and the production of some of the foods we're using. Uh, high contents with sodium as well as better utilization of natural and fresh products. So 
Um, did want to kind of show you that we are starting to use these fresh herbs again, and you're going to see a lot of more of that coming from us. And a couple other things that we're doing as well. Um, over here is an important part of our everyday operation. This is a chicken base that we use. We have this chicken base, we have a beef base, and then we also have a vegetable base. Um, as we are transitioning throughout our uh, low sodium products, one of the things that we're doing is we're getting rid of these. So we brought in a product that's made by Norris, um, and that product is actually a low sodium base. So when we utilize these to produce some of our soups and different products, it's actually got only 6% sodium compared to 32% sodium. So we've already taken a huge drop in our base of our products and using that um, to make sure that we are not increasing the sodium. Now obviously our drive is for fresh soups and stocks in the future, just not quite there yet. So while we're, while we're supplementing, we're gonna be using this low sodium base, which makes a huge difference. So another thing that we're doing is we have partnered up with a company called Spiceology. And they are great because what they allow us to do is they allow the chef to call them, tell them what kind of blends we're looking for, uh, including the low sodium or no salt blends. So as you can see here, this is a salt-free pizza pie blend. One of the couple of things that we're actually have already started using, uh, the Tandoori Glory as it's called. Uh, they make some pretty cool names for their items, but it is another sodium-free base that we use today to make our chicken tandoori. Sunday, I believe we have fried chicken on, so we're gonna try out this new fryerless chicken blend, which is basic seasonings for a fried chicken, but obviously without the sodium again. So I wanted to also show you a couple of the things that we're doing with our vegetables to assure that we're utilizing the freshest product. So what you'll see Shan doing here is tomorrow, or today, since you're on Coffee Chats now, we have a roasted beets. Uh, traditionally, people will use a frozen beet or a canned beet, which has, again, sodium in it. What Shan has already done today is she's roasted these fresh beets off first, removed the skin so they're nice and easy to cut, and she's slicing them away and preparing them for tomorrow when we will roast them off fresh with those fresh herbs. So you'll see Raul's back here actually putting in some of our fresh vegetables for today. Uh, looks like he's throwing some of the asparagus in. The asparagus that we served on Thursday is a steamed only item. So there is actually no seasonings being put on those as we serve it. One of the things that we're doing is we're utilizing this steamer to move, to move most of our products through um, the cooking process. Steam, obviously, it helps retain the moisture, also helps retain all of the nutrients in that vegetable. Definitely want to thank everyone for their time and patience as we go through the changes. Having a, me as the executive chef, obviously working with Chef Robert and the culinary team, they've been doing a really good job. So. Um, Really proud of them. Want to say thank you again to all the residents for your time, patience, and the communication that you're all doing with me because it's very important to know all the things we're doing right, but also all the things that we need to improve on. As I always tell my team, a constructive criticism is always good criticism because at least you can move forward and know what you're doing right and wrong and correct them. So thanks again, everyone, and we look forward to seeing you at Middleton's, The Loon's Nest, and everywhere else. Hey, just a couple updates from the maintenance department. First off, mulch. They're coming down Middleton Park West. Uh, they should be doing it today. And Monday, we're trying to catch up, but I don't know if you've seen it. They're trimming all the bushes, raking out the old mulch, putting in new mulch. They're doing a really good job. That's one of the reasons why they've taken so long. Uh, they've kind of changed their schedule, working four days on the normal stuff and then doing extra work on Fridays and Saturdays. So give it up to Tree Amigos for putting in the extra hours to try to make the place look beautiful. Uh, otherwise, we have the mail kiosks that are looking good. They started Silverberry, Middleton Park East. Um, we expect to have those done in the next two weeks. Again, landscaping has already given me the quotes and we'll be working on those on the off days. So we're trying to make everything look as beautiful as Middleton Park West. Uh, that's all I got this week, so have a great weekend. I'm back. I hope everybody's enjoying today's episode. I had a couple items I wanted to touch on, one of which is the current status of our recruiting efforts and some of the progress we've made in specific departments along with some key personnel updates that I'm sure everybody would like to uh, hear. 
most of which is positive. I'd like to kick it off with our retention numbers month over month from March to April. We actually had one of the best retention months that I can recall. We had a retention percentage of roughly 68%. So we will take that as very positive news. On our assisted living memory care neighborhoods, we have secured, hired, and she effectively starts this week. Her name is Karen Coleman. So she will be leading the team up there in memory care. We're glad to have her back. She was a great asset prior to and a big loss for us, but now a big win that she's back in that seat. Also in assisted living and memory care, we have effectively hired almost the entire um, staff that we were missing that we were filling with contracted labor and agency. I'd say we probably only have a few positions left that we need to hire. We've got a great pipeline and we've got many in orientation scheduled for next week. So hopefully by next week's report, we will be fully staffed with our own staff up in assisted living memory care, which is a tremendous accomplishment. Secondly, in the healthcare center, uh, we had a new hospital liaison, which some of you probably saw in community meeting. Her name is Debbie Cook. We're very excited to have her. She's been a, you know, a stable presence within this marketplace for over 20 years. So we were very fortunate to recruit her on our team. She's going to do great things for us. Um, so if you have anybody that's in the hospital outside of our residents here that she can help you with, as she said, a community meeting, she is more than happy to, uh, to take on that you know, that role for you. Also within healthcare, we've almost completed the eradication of all contracted labor and agency usage for nurses specifically. We've probably got three, maybe four nurse positions we need to hire, uh, which are primarily overnights. Uh, once we accomplish that, and I've got several that I'm working with now, um, I wouldn't say by next week we will have that accomplished, but I would say I'm very confident by the end of May we will be 100% off nurse contract labor in our healthcare center, which when we started this, we were 30 plus nurses down. Uh, it's taken about six months, but uh, that's great progress for us overall, which will equate to better outcomes and better service for our residents 100%. Next phase there, we'll be trying to rebuild our CNA, or our Certified Nursing Assistant Pool, to eliminate agency in that aspect over in the healthcare center. And we have a similar you know, challenge there. We've got a lot of wood to chop. It's gonna be roughly 20 uh, staff members we're gonna need to bring on to accomplish that. My goal there is to accomplish that by the end of June. Um, but I think we can, I think if we cannot get there by the end of June, we're going to make a very, very uh, strong push and big dent in that particular area as well. Security, also fully staffed. First time in months we have been fully staffed in our security department. Great job to Marcus Sticky and his, you know, uh, uh, recruiting efforts. He's been doing it tirelessly, training and recruiting, but uh, let's hope that the crew that we have there will be stable and you know, provide the continuity and the services that our residents uh, deserve and enjoy, along with his new uh, supervisor, Ivan. So good news on that front. On the dining front and the housekeeping front, we have two key individuals we need to hire for the main dining room, front of the house. That is going to be the assistant dining room manage manager, which would be Lindsay's number two, and also the main dining room supervisor, which essentially is Lindsay Rothman's number three. Two critical hires to allow her the time required as, long, as well as those two individuals to start doing the training and working with the staff to really improve uh, those efforts uh, in the main dining room as well as the loon's nest. We also have a bar supervisor that is vacant. We are aggressively recruiting that. That's a key position as well within dining services that we need. So um, that's where we're at with dining services. We will continue to really ramp up uh, recruiting efforts on those three key positions, as well as servers, which is a, a constant uh, hiring process. Housekeeping, we've got some good news. Yesterday we had our panel interview scheduled for the housekeeping supervisor we have been recruiting. 
Um, he has signed his offer letter and has accepted the position with Cypress Village. He has got to give ample notice there, and I believe it's at least 30 days before he will be here full time. His name is Lester Ruiz, and he comes from a competitor of ours. He's been there for three years. He's got great energy, uh, great strategy, um, very committed individual. We're excited to bring Lester on in replacement of Anthony Bone. So we'll keep you more um, in tune with that. And as soon as we can get him you know, on Coffee Chat to introduce himself to the general population, we will do that as well. Last but not least, uh, laundry services. We did hire, it was a housekeeper that was with us previously. Some of you may know her, her name is Zoe. She stayed on with us part-time PRN, never left completely, but took another position. She heard that this role was available. She immediately contacted Anthony Bone and she was interviewed on, I wanna say Wednesday and she officially accepted the position. I'm not exactly sure of the transition time for her to come on board. However, we have secured her. Uh, we've got a commitment. We've just got to get her here and in place. So great news uh, from the laundry front as well. The other aspect I wanted to mention was just some updates regarding masks. There was some confusion, I believe from some prior um, I think it was last week's coffee chat. I'm not exactly sure. It was either last week's coffee chat or something we put out written that residents were confused in independent living. Masks are not required. They are still dis discretionary or voluntary. However, our regulated areas being assisted living and memory care along with skilled nursing are requiring a mask. So if you if you visit any residents in those particular areas, it is 100% required that you wear a mask until further notice. And with that, I want to segue into uh, COVID-19, which I, I hate to even mention. However, we are seeing some increase in confirmed cases throughout Duval County. Uh, I got the report as of yesterday, and Duval County was seeing some significant increases in the confirmed cases. The positivity rate in Duval County was 8.5% yesterday. Once that reaches 10%, it starts really putting us on notice to, to stay very, you know, in tune and attentive to what the rates are within the county. We are going to keep a close eye on that and we will keep all of our residents and uh, uh, employees very, you know, well aware of what's going on. And hopefully we do not have to initiate anything. Um, as of this time, we are not, and I will keep everybody posted in relation to any next steps if necessary. And with that, I'm gonna roll into birthdays. Uh, believe it or not, we have no birthdays in Cypress Village between the 12th and the 14th. So I'm gonna jump over to the 15th, which is this Sunday. We've got Mrs. Dot Conley, Dot, happy birthday to you. We've got Miss Jerry Paul, and Larry Peliquin, all on the 15th. So Larry, Jerry, and Dot, happy birthday to you all this weekend. On the 16th, we've got one birthday gal, and that is Mary Jacobson. On the 17th, we've got one birthday gal, and that is Miss Lori Rees. Lori, happy birthday to you out there. On the 18th, we've got another birthday gal, um, and that's Miss Terry O'Connell. Terry, happy birthday to you on the 18th, which is Wednesday. And then on the 20th, none on the 19th, but on the 20th, we've got Mr. Henry Stalls Jr. And his birthday is on Friday the 20th. So wish all of those residents a happy birthday. And to all of you out in the Cypress Village, wishing you all the best over the weekend. And God bless and enjoy yourselves and your family and friends. Take care. Marsh Freddy the 13th. Oh my gosh. This is worse. Pull it together, Laurel. <laughs> okay. I got anything in my teeth? Let me try that again. <laughs> yeah. Good morning, Cypress Village. Oh my god, what's happening today? <laughs> Good morning. Ah! Good morning. Ah! What's going on? Okay. I learned that this goes on bloopers, man. I didn't know that part. It's fine. <laughs>